everyone and welcome to the Engadget live stream of Samsung's Galaxy Unpacked 2023. I am Deputy Editor Sherlyn Lowe and joining me today is Senior Writer Sam Rutherford. Oh, wrong side. Sam Rutherford. Hey. Hey, Sam. Hola. How you doing? Uh, I'm good. I have, a, I have a very important question for you. Yes, please. Please. The, the How do you feel about your name being Sam and we're covering Sam's song? <laughs> You, you, after all this time, you're going to bring up like the, the, the dumbest joke that like, you know, I've heard this like maybe 13, 1400 times. I figured, yes. Uh, so, you know, I, I've never made that joke before with you. I thought I might as well try. Uh, it's actually that's true. You ha you are the first time the first time you're making that joke. But, uh, you know, as you might expect, I have heard it before. Yes. So anyway, here's the uh, details on what's happening. OK, we're here. We're live right now. 1230 p.m. I see a lot of you are in the chat. We will get to you in a little bit. Samsung's Galaxy Unpack keynote kicks off at 1 p.m. Eastern. That's about 28 minutes from now. We're just here a little early because we're excited to get to talk to you all uh, and just chat about nothing and everything all at once. Um, <laughs> yeah, but Buddy Love but, is asking, yeah. are, are we at the event? Sadly, we are not. The event is in San Francisco. Um, and mm -hmm. so we're both on the East Coast for this. Uh, we're kind of just attending, you know, watching the live stream with you guys. So, you know, we'll be here yes. to chat about it and talk as we. I, um, yeah. I, yeah. I think it's much more fun to be like live streaming and talking to the chat, honestly. Um, yeah, so. because I, I mean, a lot of times like when we're at the events, we're so busy, especially if we're doing like a live blog. We're so busy, like regurgitating the information that we don't have a chance to like interact with people. And I think mm -hmm. that's like, you know, that's one of my like things that I like to do the most is like just talk about what, you know, what other people think about. Like, hey, do you like this gadget? Like you care about this feature, you know, whatever. So I like I like exactly. having that interaction. Um, yeah. So the other thing is when Samsung's event happens or starts at about 1 p.m. Eastern, we me and Sam will not really be talking much, but you can stay here on the Engadget YouTube channel to watch the stream. We will be hosting it right here. You don't have to leave. And then after we will have a Q&A session to just kind of go over and go into detail about what we all just saw. Uh, Sam and I may or may not have some information to share at that point. So ask your questions. Fire away. Um, I want to say hi to everyone in the chat. I see our, some of our familiar names like Buddy305 Love, you mentioned just now, Sam, CF542, Brian James, Lucky Dog Podcast, I Can Poop Twice a Day, yay. We're very glad you're here. We can't complain you're not here. Skilled Buyer is here as well. Finesse Guru, Depro, Deprogrammer9, uh, lots of you. I see some people are here. Bringing from out that government name again. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, Lee Wen Kong, uh, Tech Minded, Ron Matthew. Uh, we have people saying hi from Turkey. We have people saying hi from Indonesia, Brazil. Hi, mom. Hi. Is that me? Is that me? Am I your mom? Um, but yeah, here you go. Uh, Deepro Night also brings out the uh, mass spreader event. We think we think Samsung's unpack might be a mass spreader event. I mean, that's always that's always a chance when you get that many people in the same room. That said, like, you know, we were at CES not that long ago and most of us came home like I pretty know. OK. I was I was shocked. I, I, I didn't was get, shocked. I didn't get a cold or anything like I felt perfectly fine that whole week and the week after. Yeah. So I don't uh, who knows? Yeah. Hi. Also, I mean, so when we started saying hi, everyone else started saying hi to Sir Richard Manikowski says hi from Arizona. Turbine says hi. Chiros White, Conrad, Anil Vinayak, Darren N, Aksa 07 says the S23 FE is going to use Exynos. Everything else will have Snapdragon globally. Cool. Hey, well, we so can get into I'm that. Not, yeah. I'm not convinced there's going to be an S23 FE either because we didn't get one last year. Right. Um, I think so. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, yeah there's knows? a chance the FE might have run its course. No, you know, Samsung hasn't said anything officially about this yet. Um, but just, just yeah. based on last year, I'm not entirely sure the FE is going to be a thing going forward. Yeah, but that is one of the uh, more popular rumors swirling around, which is that every model of the S23 is supposed to have Snapdragon chipsets this year instead of Exynos, which always had a performance delta uh, mm -hmm. in the Asian and European regions it was released. So we'll see. Um, hi also to Sean, MHA Girls. Manish asked if uh, Millimeter Wave is coming to India uh, this time. We don't have the region-specific information or any information that I know of just yet. Just uh, yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, um, some people yeah. are asking when the event starts. The event uh, officially starts in 25 minutes. Um, so, you know, stay tuned to us. Like Sherlyn said, you know, you don't have to change channels. If you want to, you know, watch the live stream, we'll have it on here. Um, yes. But yeah. Uh, hi, Brian James says they're in Tampa. We've got hi from blank, blank Bangladesh. We've had hi, we've got hi from Syria. I, uh, I saw a hi from Belize, uh, one of my favorite ooh. places in the world. I've been there twice. Uh, Belize is awesome. Hi from CA. I'm assuming California from Shravan Kumar Puvula, I think. Uh, hi from LA. The FE is dead. Nice anime makeup. Really? I mean, people have some big problem with my eyelashes sometimes. And look, I think they sure, get I mean, sure, of... that, that's like a compliment, right? Because like, you know, oh, no, no, I know. Ca cartoon characters like, you know, they look really like perfect, right? Because, you know, they don't see any like no, no, no artist is going to draw like, you know, Bad something on their, on their face. Right. Right. So, yeah, I, I think that's a compliment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Erkan. I, I agree. I was just referring to some other comments on our previous YouTube videos where people are like, oh, eyelashes. I'm like, yes, these are nice. I like them. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but back to the topic, right? I mean, Samsung is holding what the first Galaxy Unpacked this year. What do we expect to see other than BTS? Because I am hopeful. Well, no, so I, tell I, what. I was going to say, are we going to see BTS? Because that kind of ties into the fan edition thing. Fan edition's going away. BTS, some of them are serving their military duty right now uh mm. if i'm not mistaken yeah so maybe maybe we get some cameos from like part of the group but maybe obviously not, not a, could be could be mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. so I, I i don't have a favorite but shirlin do you have a favorite bts member no i could tell you my favorite blackpink i'm not much of a bts stan i'm more of a Fair blink enough. army um but no in addition to i mean yes you're right bts may or may not show up if they do show up if any of their members show up i will be mad as hell that we didn't go to sf <laughs> uh because <laughs> i'll be getting my way in there um but there is also what we're gonna see phones right we're expecting the galaxy s23 s23 ultra we're also expecting the rumors say laptops yeah, so. there, it looks like, you know, there's going to be a bunch of laptops, no tablets from, you know, previous leaks and rumors, uh, which does feel a little bit weird because about this time last year, Samsung did announce the, the Tab S8 line. So it's mm -hmm. a little weird that we're not getting any news about tablets, or at least it seems that way. You know, maybe mm -hmm. that sets up Samsung doing a bigger push, you know, closer to uh, late spring, early summer, maybe yeah. around IO timing for the tablets. But, you know, this is just, you know, leaks and rumors, no, no official info from anyone yet. Avery Crawl in the chat says, please give me a reason to upgrade. So let us know what phone you're using right now, Avery, because who knows what you're upgrading from. But yeah, the S23 
could or could not be great. Uh, hi, all is like so, so many uh, hellos since we started <laughs> saying hi. So I'm gonna like keep shouting you all out because I like saying hi to you all. Um, we have ice locked Dallas, Texas, Gordon Kane. I'm sorry. It's snowing here in the New York area. Um, Luminous Wings was excited to see what gets shown. Ha, CF542 says FE stands for failed edition. That's quite funny. <laughs> Sean and was uh, asking, I'm not sure if it's worth trading in my S22, S22 Ultra for this new one yet. I would say it's hard to like, unless you just, you know, like new devices, which obviously, you know, we understand, like, you know, we love gadgets. If you want to upgrade, you know, do the upgrade. It's hard to justify upgrading after just a year in general nowadays. What, yeah. do, you th what do you think, Sherlyn? I'm not. I'm not a fan of the annual upgrade cycle. Like, unless on your some kind, you're on some kind of plan that makes that easy. I I don't think so. Um, that, that that said, I'm like the the like biggest hypocrite about this because I've upgraded my Galaxy Fold like every year for the last few years. But I mean, that's partly from like a you know professional. I'm just curious. Exactly. And, like I want to do long term testing with at least you know one or two devices every year. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, outside of that, it's, you know, it's hard to justify. We've got someone really excited about Ohio in the chat. So we're, we're good. We get it. Sport, straight drive sports fan. Uh, we're going to we're going to time you out a little bit because we don't support spam here in this channel. Um, but also hello to uh, Elvis Doro. Hi from Center Catarina mm -hmm. in Brazil. Uh, I saw a name that said hi from Malaysia. That was Sarveen Supya. Hey, selamat datang. Um, and also people from India, St. Pete Paradise in Florida, skilled buyer. Um, there's a lot of people who are quoting Nicki Minaj is the queen of rap or also Megan Trainer, And I uh, appreciate the sentiment. I just like, feel like we should bring it back to Samsung a little bit. <laughs> uh, CS, uh, CF542 was asking, when do they announce the foldables? Uh, it's highly unlikely there's going to be any foldable news this time around. Uh, Samsung, for the last few years, historically announces new foldables in the fall, usually, you know, around between August, September time frame. So don't, um, you know, don't expect much in the way of new Z series phone news uh, today, at least. We also saw... Uh one someone also said they were very excited to see this uh what custom samsung uh, snapdragon chipset mm -hmm. i mean i'm excited to see the details too we're not very sure i don't know i will i will say i think that like qualcomm has a lot to worry about right in the processor space because we've got what Google making its own tensor. Apple's mm -hmm. made Bionic for a long time now. We see people moving away from ordering third-party chips and making their own in-house. Or and at least Sims working with companies like Qualcomm to customize some of the chips. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's, it, I think that's a really good point. Like it's an interesting approach to see, you know, companies like Samsung align themselves more with certain companies in order to have a little bit extra level of customization when it comes to a certain chip or, you know, the features uh, on that chip. So it'll be interesting to see if we get, you know, how much they tell us about that today. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, these keynotes don't tend to be very detailed. We usually get more information after the fact in press releases or I don't know. I will say sometimes Samsung's messaging can be a bit of a mess. That will be a personal rant for my personal show another time. Uh <laughs> We will we'll have we got a lot of other um, comments as well. We've got uh, also want to say a hi to, to the person that said hi from Singapore, my home country. Um, people tech minded really like the Mac mini. There was someone who liked the MacBook too. someone already. There was some like anti Apple sentiment already going on. I was like, y'all, this is not the place for it because we're talking about Samsung. I mean, you can. And I'm sure we'll mention Apple at some point during the stream, but uh, we'll see. Uh, oh, oh, it's, and, it's too hmm. early in the year to start the Samsung, Samsung Apple fight uh, already. Uh, wait, exactly. wait, you know th that's more for like WWDC uh, time when you know they really you know Apple oh, gets yeah. on its like big messaging kick. Yeah, uh, Montessar says I hate Samsung phones, but I love new tech. Do I have to stay? You don't have to stay. Do whatever you want. Um, but if you want to see new phones, new tech. Wait, I, I can poop twice a day. Dave two D just posted really. Day 3D or 2D? 2D. Oh, I don't know who that is. Uh, it's I'm Dave back. Lee. He's a Canadian. Oh, YouTuber. Dave Lee. We know Dave Lee. I thought yeah, it was, yeah. I always thought it was 3D. Um, 
I'm really bad at names sometimes. <laughs> hey, if we if we can't get to your comment, uh, I guess apologies. There's just a lot of them. Uh, so as much as I want to say hi to everyone, like hi from India to Ron Matthew, hi Reza who says hi to everyone, hi from South Africa, Guy Three, I think. Um, yeah, there, there is, we just can't get to every single one, but we're doing our best to to address your questions. For everyone that's new to this stream, meaning uh, in fifteen. You know, you just joined in the last 10 minutes or something. Well, in 15 minutes, Samsung's actual keynote is going to kick off. Me and Sam are just here chatting with y'all uh, at the moment, answering your questions, speculating about what we're about to see. Uh, and then after Samsung's uh, keynote, we will be hosting a Q&A session to go over everything that we've seen here. And during the Samsung stream itself, you don't have to leave. You can stay here and watch Samsung's event. We will mostly be quiet unless there is any clarification that needs to be made during uh, I don't know, we will be here watching it with you, but you might not see our faces. Just don't worry, we're still here. Just don't worry, we're still here. And, and uh, stick around after the show because we'll be back to talk about more, you know, more news and, and opinions and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, Melon Kim in the chat mm. says Ni hao. So there you go. Way to stand out by using Chinese. Because <laughs> I <laughs> can't read everything, but I can read for sure the uh, Ni hao. Uh, I was going to say, Harsh Deep was saying he's still using the Note 10 Plus. And this, I also saw, I don't know if you someone else or the same person also said they're still using Note 10 Plus. That is, to me, that's still one of the best looking Note yeah. phones. Because remember, it had that uh, iridescent, like, rainbow back finish. That was one of the yep. color options. That's still one of my favorite um, Note 10s, uh, they've ever, or Note series they've ever made. Uh, he says, so Confused, pretty. actually. He says the Note 10 Plus is still working. I mean, if you like it and it's still working, like, don't. Don't feel the need to upgrade unless you want to upgrade. I think there's always like a lot of pressure to like, you know, people feel like they have to get the latest and greatest thing. It's like, no, yeah. you don't like, don't worry about it. You'll, you'll be fine. If you want, if you want to upgrade, that's cool. But like, don't feel the pressure. Uh, to the person that just uh, donated <laughs> money, I would like to say that if you donate money here, we don't know where it goes. So <laughs> please do not go crazy start doing it now because we don't know where it goes we appreciate your support for sure Definitely. uh if you want to show your support you can always leave a nice comment you can send us a nice email uh sam and i are available on twitter if you're still using that platform i am <laughs> at sherlin low on twitter and, and you can see the banner below with the actual mm -hmm, spelling mm -hmm. of it uh sam you're at sam rutherford very simple yeah uh, shout out also, it's, I'm just going to keep trying to say hi to people saying hi. There's a lot of you. I'm very happy to see all of you, but there's a lot of you. Uh, hi to Daniel Munoz from Spain. Hi to North Miming from Nigeria. From Mr. Rainbow Loves Coffee says hi from Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, and Terry Trent says hello world. So you must be a programmer. Uh, Ron Matthew asks, which phones are we using? So I'm going to go ahead and say... I, I usually main two devices at once, um, and this one this year I'm doing the iPhone 14 Pro and the uh, Pixel 7 Pro. Sam, how about you? Uh, I'm using the Pixel 7 Pro, but my daily driver is the Z Fold 4. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. Same same with you. Like I feel like it's hard it's hard to go out without two phones, and it's weird yeah. to say that, but like I think because we're always like testing stuff and comparing, it's like actually really useful. Um, yeah. But. In an ideal world, I wish I didn't have to carry multiple phones around. I know. Same. I mean, that's, that's the problem is that like I carry whichever phone has the SIM in it now, right? Because I love the Pixel 7 Pro for its cameras. I still think it ha Google has the superior camera system, if only because its portrait mode still far surpasses Apple's. Uh, but Apple has like kind of reached pixels level on like most standard pictures now, to me mm -hmm. anyway. So I'm like, eh, it's fine. Yeah, and, it, and it's always funny because like, if I only have one phone, the, inevitably there'll be this like really niche situation where I wish I had the other one. Like just right. the other day, I was taking a picture of my kid and, and like, you know, before bedtime, the lights were turned down and like the night mode on the, on the Galaxy uh, Z Fold 4 just isn't as good as this uh, uh, Pixel 7 Pro. And I was just like, man, I wish like just for this second, I wish I had the other phone in my hand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every now and then there's like a feature you wish that every, like the phone that you're holding on to at the moment, um, has mm -hmm. uh i got a, i see a few more questions in the chat about when it starts yes things are going to kick off samsung's uh, event is going to kick off in about 12 minutes still not really time for a toilet break yet i had to like push it to the very last minute to go for that toilet break but we're not also <laughs> expecting samsung's event to run that long typically these last around an hour so if you want to go for your 
bathroom break now you're gonna grab a snack uh tell us in the chat what you're what you're sipping on or chomping on um and also continuing to tell us where you're where you were watching us from because it looks like we uh, have a Detroit very Michigan. international uh, uh, yeah also love love it and someone uh x x uh, 07 was asking oh hey there you know as a long time fold user they're asking me how do i feel about the crease honestly i don't even notice it anymore um i think it's it's one of those differences between like here's something that like you you like hear about or you maybe you haven't used and the first thing you notice is that fold and it's definitely there and you know it, it's you know it, you there's only so much you can do to hide it like you're never gonna like fully get rid of it until you make something that doesn't have a crease at all um but that said as someone who's owned multiple folds folds and you know use them for a long time i honestly do not see the crease anymore um it just it doesn't even register when i'm like looking using or looking at the phone same for me in my like most of my use of like foldable phones the crease you, really you carried doesn't a feel Z, much. the z flip three around for basically the whole year yeah um, yeah and so, uh, it's yeah. still yeah it's my go-to like a uh, selfie taker still the, the, the still the most stylish phone on the market i would say exactly i love it um i, I saw someone r r c h said well i need but in like the hanyu ping spelling instead of the chinese characters you know what attempt acknowledged uh, recognized mm -hmm. Um, people have been asking again, <laughs> y'all, I feel like at this point, I think, you know, it starts at 1 PM Eastern, uh, Kavi Raj said they're still rocking with a note eight pro. So the one right after the exploding ones, mm -hmm. okay. that, that, right. that was a, that was a, you know, a little, little bit of a leap of faith to get the hop on the note line after that. Right after. Yeah, exactly. Um, we've got a lot of nice comments from all over the world. Honestly, looks like people are very interested. Oh, we got Mark Dell uh, in the chat. Mark Dell is uh, a just a regular and gadget podcast slash and gadget live streams uh, audience member. Um, and you know what? If you uh, also come back tomorrow morning at about 1030 a.m. Eastern here on the Engadget YouTube channel, Sam and I will be back hosting the Engadget podcast. Uh, it's a live stream where we just show you how we record the Engadget podcast, but we can also answer questions uh, during that, during our segment breaks. It's usually a fun time, and that's how we remember the name Mark Dell. Sherlyn, you, you see there's uh, some more uh, opinion in, uh, in the chat. Yeah. Very I formal. Saw... Do you see that? Hun Kaoshing, Rich Neiman. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, oh, I need yeah, to yeah, go yeah. up. I saw the multiple wall I need with heart emoji. I need to go up higher, right? Do I need to? Where Where is it? It's from uh, a single single name Thomas. Oh, oh, that's nice. Uh, Sarfra's Mahmoud says Mr. Mobile recommended the Fold Three. I think quite a few of us liked. Oh, I see it, Thomas. Hengaoshing Rinchen even very nice. Um, yeah, Mr. Mobile recommended the Fold Three. Uh, yeah, I think we, we did too, yeah. didn't we? Um, yeah. and, and someone asked, like, do you think the Fold series can last five years worth of use? And I will say yes, but with one big caveat is that you have to, you're going to have to take the phone into Samsung or send it away at some point to get that screen protector replaced. Because mm. as I found out, the, all the previous Folds have, you know, the screen protector kind of separates and you start getting bubbles. So you either have to remove the screen protector and get it replaced or remove it and just go naked, um, which is a little bit scary for some people. That yeah. said, um, you know, I've had the Z Fold 4 for like, five, six months now, <coughs> excuse me, five, six months, and the, the screen protector has not started bubbling yet. So, you know, maybe fingers crossed Samsung figured it out. Um, we'll see. That new, yeah, I love this, these like long-term six months after or one year later kind of reviews to tell you how well. Well, I think one year later almost feels like a little too late to the game, right? Because mm -hmm. we're reviewing something one year later. Yes, it's a good endurance test, but at that point, who's still buying this phone, right? Yeah. It, it's, so it's six always, months in. I want to say it's always hard for us because like, you know, we'll, we'll use, we'll get a phone when it's new and we'll use it for, you know, a week, two weeks, maybe three weeks, and, you know, we'll do our review. But it's really difficult for us to do long term coverage for everything because it's just too, you know, there's so many gadgets and there's only, you know, a certain amount of us. And, you know, I yeah. can't spend eight hours a day using eight phones. One, just, yeah. it's, it's impossible. Uh, four things. I want a quick shout out. Uh, greetings from Ireland. That's nice. Uh, Tony D says that they watched our Z Fold 4 live stream and it was wonderful. Hey, thanks for coming back. We're glad you enjoyed it and we're glad you're here again. Uh, Brandon says that they are having roti brata and Milo Dinosaur for supper. You are Singaporean. I know this. Uh, Milo <laughs> Dinosaur is a delicious drink. Y'all should have it. And Don Muna Wira uh, also hi to Tawinger from uh, Zimbabwe. Let me know if I pronounced your name correctly or wrong. I'm sorry if 
if I got it wrong. Don Muna Weaver says, has anyone switched from iPhone to Galaxy? Someone higher up also said that they switched from their iPhone 14 Pro Max or they are thinking they have an iPhone 14 Pro Max and are thinking of switching. Um, what do you think? I think at this point, we don't know enough about the Galaxy S23 to tell you if it's worth switching over. Mm -hmm. But my take is that the iPhone 14 Pro is a very good phone. A very good phone. <clears throat> I think... To me, at this point, it's less about the specs of individual devices. It's about which, you know, a, a, as silly as it may sound, like which ecosystem are you more comfortable with? Which yeah. OS are you more comfortable with? You know, some things for me, it's like I, you know, I switched from an iPhone 4S or a 5, iPhone 5 to Android right. like way back in the day. Yeah. Um, but it's like some things it's like I just really like having a back gesture on Android, which you don't get yeah, on iPhone. Exactly. And it's like, God, yeah. Though those are like some of those little things. It's like unless you're prepared to like give those up and switch ecosystems, it's mm -hmm. hard to like, you know, tell people just oh, just go switch just because the specs are slightly better. Um, do you know yeah. What I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, th there's not a lot of reason right now to switch other than like you said the back button is something i really miss when i use the iphone mm -hmm. you have to reach across the screen to hit back sometimes um but i think we're reaching smartphone parity in terms of across the os uh, uh sort of differences here yep. um i can poop twice a day ask if dave 2d just broke embargo or are you tripping i have no comment uh <laughs> Thomas said that they only learned formal Chinese because they're French and studied in Shanghai. Sarfra's mom who says, can the Fold 5 bend both ways? Hey, who knows? Um, yeah, I mean, I Sam think Samsung did show off some interesting foldable screen tech at CES. Exactly. But once again, those, you know, those were not even concept devices. Those were like literally tech demos. And yeah. so there's always a lag time between like when a tech is like theoretically available and when it actually becomes uh, available on retail devices. Um, exactly. And that can that can vary between a year or more, depending on the exact kind of tech. So, yeah. I mean, stay tuned later this year. Maybe, you know, I think and we said this back when the Z Fold 4 came out, like the Z Fold 4 was like a refined, you know, slightly nicer version of the Z Fold 3. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you were looking at like having a two a big two year cycle for their foldable devices, you know, mm -hmm. it may kind of suggest that maybe they're looking for a bigger change, a bigger upgrade with the Z Fold 5. That said, we'll see. It's hard to say this early. Um, real quick, uh, shouts from earlier in the chat before I just go all the way down to the current chat. Uh, Anmol, I believe, said, I love the diversity in this chat section. Really goes to show that Samsung has significant international appeal. Yeah, we've seen people from all around the world. Samsung has great global reach, which is why it's important for them to release similar quality phones around the world, but we'll see. Um, Li Wen Kang says, Ni Zhongwen shuo de hen hao, xie xie. Um, <laughs> The Tuareg, I believe, says, drinking black tea with milk and watching on my Pixel 5a. Greetings from Russia. There you go. Mm, um, I could use some, uh, some milk, uh, milk tea right oh, now. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And speaking of, this is your four minute warning. Samsung's event is about to kick off in about four minutes at 1 p.m. Eastern. If you need a toilet break, you need a bathroom break, or just grab yourself something to eat or drink, do that now. Uh, and if not, if you just want to chat with us, drop uh, your questions. I'm just going to skip all the way to the bottom of the chat now because, sorry guys, I can't read that fast or answer that quickly. Um, a lot of questions about the Note phones. What do we think? I don't I mean, think the notes ever coming back. I, I, I was going to say, I don't think it's ever coming back. The, the, the Samsung, at least for now, they seem to be really in love with this ultra name. And the, mm. the ultra is like represents um, what they think is supposed to be the, the like do everything phone from Samsung. And so yeah. that includes having an S Pen with a uh, included, you know, storage slot and all that. And you actually talked to Samsung a little bit about this last year when yep. they didn't have a new note to talk about. Yeah, and they were like, no, this is not the end of the note. But they really said it was more the note branding would stick around. I think they're looking like a It was note. like the heritage of the note. Yeah, exactly. So I don't think we're going to see a note phone anytime soon, but maybe a note tablet or maybe a note foldable. That's me speculating. I don't really have any uh, actual info right now. I, would, I see, yeah. Especially after they added stylus support to the Fold series, I would love to see at least, hey, put a stylus storage in the device because right now the only way to like store you know bring your s pen around with you is to get one of those s pen yeah. cases and those are just really bulky and i'm not a huge fan i know most people use cases i don't but like yeah i still think there should be a better way to like have your s pen with you if you're you know a, a z fold owner 
Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, Jean Pierre says, "Hey, thank you for this live stream. You're having a great time. Hey, thanks for leaving that message." Summit Hotwani says, "I wanted to say I love the podcast. Makes my day. Oh my gosh! Thank you. We're very glad. That's that's all we strive to do. Uh, speaking of the podcast, tomorrow morning at about 10:30 a.m. Eastern, you can come back to the Engadget YouTube channel over here where we record the Engadget podcast live every week. Uh, tomorrow it'll be Sam and I just going over what we learned today, as well as some other news from the week. Uh, D Rakuramai says, "Hey." Sherlyn, has anyone told you you really look like Ming Na Wen? Yeah, literally everyone. <laughs> Sherlyn has been trying to leverage this into like a cameo in Marvel for like the last however many years. Uh, Agents we'll of Shield. We'll see if it happens. Did you did you hear they might bring Chloe Bennett back as Quake? This is just rumors, yeah. very 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 much rumors, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I heard it would be interesting to see. I mean, the the this this upcoming phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is not something I'm very. Uh, I feel sure like they're still right trying now. to figure it out. Um, they don't yeah. ex- ex- like they know the general direction of like where yeah. the next Marvel phase is going, but it's like yeah. it's not coming together in the same way that it did for Endgame. So anyway, this is a uh, one minute till start time. We're already seeing Samsung change up his live stream image to the disclaimer as per usual. So we're going to stop talking very soon, but we appreciate chatting with you. Uh, and you know what? You would keep an eye on the Engadget website. You know, uh, we might have information soon and stay tuned till the end of the stream. We will be back to chat more with you about Samsung's announcements. It's also 1 p.m. Eastern now. Go to Engadget.com. We've seen everything. Go. Go yeah. now and then come there, back. there might there might be some some news and coverage on on engadget.com Welcome to Galaxy Unpack 2023. Thank you for all joining us today, online and in person. I can feel the energy in the room. It is good to be back together. This is an extraordinary moment. More than ever, people turn to brands they trust for the tools on which they can depend to navigate our rapidly changing world. At Samsung, this demand for trusted performance pushes us to deliver more meaningful innovations beyond the specs. It pushes us to create devices that are truly the best and be a brand you can be proud of. Technology that is great right now and still great years from now with even less impact on our planet. And there's no better proof than the industry-leading Galaxy S series. For more than a decade, the Galaxy S series has redefined what a smartphone can deliver, constantly pushing the envelope of groundbreaking technology and reliable performance. And this year's S series continues in that intrepid tradition, building on an S series legacy exceeding your expectations. Once again, redefining what a smartphone can be. With the most impressive pro-grade camera, you can take the best photos in any light. And with the most powerful, but also power efficient performance, you can open up the ultimate productivity and creativity experience in the palm of your hand. And the exciting part is, your galaxy is expanding. Whenever you add new devices or services, you unlock an even better experience with a seamless connectivity in a growing ecosystem. So you can do, create, and accomplish more with your Samsung Galaxy device. 
meaningful innovation doesn't stop at the best performance. It also means devices that are engineered to last longer. With industry-leading durability, easy repairability, and software updates for years to come. And this extends to the materials we use, including more recycled ocean-bound plastic, plus recycled metals and glass. We earn and re-earn your trust with the quality. And with a purposeful design and performance, there is a setting a new standard again and again. Today, we are excited to introduce two amazing devices. The Galaxy S23, our best Galaxy S series ever, and our new Galaxy Book 3 PCs with our first Ultra PC. The Ultra brand means big, it means bold, it means the best of the best. We created these devices to set the new premium standard for innovation, to deliver powerful performance without compromise for every consumer and for the planet we share. But you do not have to take my word for it. Seeing is believing. The presentations you will see today were all filmed with the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Welcome to Unpack. The Galaxy experience has always been fueled by our commitment to deliver innovation and technology to help you do more each day. The power of Ultra comes from our best hardware working hand in hand with our most innovative software. It stands out by introducing groundbreaking experiences year after year, representing our most cutting edge products. Ultra was inspired by the Galaxy Note series, combining powerful performance and an outstanding S Pen with a best-in-class camera and the entertainment experiences of our S series. I think you'll agree, the Galaxy S23 Ultra is as iconic and striking as ever. And this year, the Galaxy S23 and S23 Plus take cues from this groundbreaking design, creating a cohesive look and feel across the series. From design to power to intelligence, the elements of Ultra come together and our best camera yet. In fact, the presentations at today's Unpacked were filmed using the Galaxy S23 Ultra. To show us what the Galaxy S23 Ultra's pro-grade camera can do, we worked with world-renowned director-producer Sir Ridley Scott to create a special film. He's best known for his iconic films, Alien Covenant, that's right, Gladiator, The Martian, and more. His approach to cinematography and visual storytelling highlights the capabilities of our most powerful camera. It's truly a sight to behold. Behold, it's a very simple piece of storytelling where we're in an environment which is aggressive and every turn this man takes, it seems to have an aggressive side to it. 
he finds absolution in a peace with an animal with a horse that he turns loose at the end. Out of a dark world becomes good things with good behavior. It is therefore a little bit poetic. And I thought it's a great challenge. It's a very interesting challenge. But the scary thing is the small object is going to take the place of all the big cameras, which is great. At first, I feared it wouldn't give me the range of options I normally have available when working. But once I became accustomed to its settings, I was pleasantly surprised by how versatile it was. Once I became more familiar with the S23, I was impressed with its capabilities, the quality of image, and the dynamic range of the sensor. A professional camera can be this big or this big. This is amazing. I like being able to go into real environments where a lot of rooms and a lot of space are very small. So it's very useful. It's great. Sometimes the visual is more powerful than the word, and sometimes the word is more powerful than the visual. Therefore, to me, a story can come out of something that is completely silent and only visual. So I love always to explore the visual side. Just do it. Make sure you know what you're doing. Incredible, right? We'll be releasing the full film soon, and we can't wait for you to see it. The Galaxy S23 Ultra can capture epic details with professional grade quality. It's the most advanced camera ever on a Galaxy device. And with the cameras on the Galaxy S23 series, you'll be able to capture and share pro-grade content too. Over to Jax to tell you more. Thanks, Drew. When we create memories, we often rely on our smartphones to preserve those moments. That means the quality of our camera is super important. With Super HDR, you can capture a wider range of light and dark tones in your videos with more accurate colors. The cameras combine readings from both low and high ISO to produce high quality images with a wider 12-bit dynamic range spectrum of colors. This means that your footage will depict light and dark areas more accurately, thanks to the 1.5 times increase in full well capacity, which increases the maximum amount of charge that each pixel can hold before saturation, allowing us to bring 4K Super HDR technology at 60 frames per second to both the rear and front cameras for the very first time. It's all made possible by the new advanced sensor on the Galaxy S23 series. It supports Super HDR to improve color clarity and allows for faster processing, which is necessary when capturing in high quality. With this model's processor, you can now film in 8K at 30 frames per second with a wider angle for a more cinematic feel. We've also enhanced the camera to absorb 2.5 times more light than before, giving you brighter footage. Your photos should be as epic as your videos. The Galaxy S23 Ultra packs 200 million pixels in the main wide camera. That means you can even capture details of the background in your images. These pixels transform based on lighting conditions with our new adaptive pixel sensor. When lighting is low, 16 pixels combine into one larger pixel to capture more light, resulting in brighter photos. In standard lighting conditions, the pixels combine into groups of four through our new Tetra squaring process, resulting in higher quality 50 megapixel images. Of course, amazing photos require more than high resolution. We've made it easier to autofocus with Super Quad Pixel, 
which uses each of the 200 million pixels to easily bring your subject into sharp focus. By using four adjacent pixels to detect differences from left to right and top to bottom, it allows the camera to autofocus faster because it has more points of reference. This gives you the power to shoot higher quality and more accurate photos, which is super helpful in low light conditions, where it's typically more difficult to focus. These innovations behind the screen are incredible. So how can you use these developments in your everyday? you're just beginning to explore content creation, or you're a professional filmmaker, the cameras on the Galaxy S23 series help you capture photos and videos in epic detail. To bring the shots they envisioned to life, Pro Video Mode gave our directors the ability to meticulously change their camera settings for focus, white balance, ISO, and more. And with Clean Preview, they were able to remove the UX when monitoring takes, which means they could frame every shot with ease. This is a new feature added to Camera Assistant, our app that allows you to choose and adjust a range of camera settings from activating a faster shutter to auto lens switching. The Galaxy S23 series brings you more flexibility to help you create share-worthy content, whether you're documenting your vacation or making a film of your own. With photos from my gallery, I often create high quality GIFs to share with friends and family. But some of my favorite GIFs that I receive or I find online are low resolution. With GIF Remaster, I can sharpen each frame to enhance the quality of GIFs that somebody else created. You can also take videos and photos that are out of this world. Astro Hyperlapse allows everyday users to capture the starry night sky with professional quality. And with Expert Raw, users can get detailed metadata for more creative control. To help you easily take photos that would usually require an elaborate setup, we're also introducing multiple exposures and Astrophoto to Expert Raw. These are just a few of the ways that the premium offerings of the Galaxy S23 series let you easily create professional content every day. To tell you more, back to Drew. Thanks, Jax. The Galaxy S23 Ultra delivers pro-grade camera experiences that let you capture life as you see it. We introduced nitography last year to help you take crisp and clear photos in low light. And this year, we're taking that power to the next level so you can capture striking footage with vivid colors even at night. To showcase its capabilities, the esteemed and award-winning director, Na Hong Jin, created a film using the Galaxy S23 Ultra. He's known for his films The Wailing, The Chaser, and The Yellow Sea. His unmistakable style uses dark imagery, combining elements of horror and suspense to tell stories that are both entertaining and profound. Let's go behind the scenes to see how Na Hong Jin used the Galaxy S23 Ultra to capture an action-packed thriller in the dark. Let's 
이게 찍다 보면 분위기가 많이 무너지기 마련이거든요. HDR 부분에 있어 갖고는 그 부분이 저희가 어두운 부분을 촬영하는데 굉장히 도움이 많이 됐었고 저희도 일반 영화 찍을 때처럼 조금 라이트를 갖다 조금 더 줄이고 어두운 걸 부각시키게 그런 식으로 시도를 했었는데 아주 놀랍도록 그 디테일들이 많이 살아 있었던 것 같아요. 이렇다면 정말 재밌어진다 상황이 이런 느낌이 들었어요. 스마트폰으로 촬영을 하는 데 있어 갖고 가장 신경을 쓰는 부분들이 카메라 무빙을 자제하고 되도록이면 펜을 잘안 하려고 하거든요. 그런데 이번 같은 경우는 끊임없이 카메라가 계속 움직여요. 그런 부분에서 포커스들이 아주 자연스럽게 잘 캐치를 했었던 것 같고요. 놀라웠던 부분은 120프레임 부분이 하이스피드를 찍는 전문가용 카메라 못지않게 굉장히 자연스러운 모션 블러나 속도감으로 너무 잘 나온 것 같아서 아주 마음에 들어하고 있습니다. 네. 그 문을 박차고 들어오는데 한대 줘봐 그러고 아주 위험한 위치에 잡아놓고 조금 더 생동감 있게 아주 쉽게 캐치를 할수 있었던 것 같아요. 그런 면에서 작은 카메라가 갖는 가장 큰 장점이 아닐까. 충분히 어, 전문적인 영상에 들어갈 수 있을 만한 클립들을 만들 수 있을 것 같아요. 이 기능 그리고 이 성능 그리고 이 수준이 영화에서 이 정도로 활용될 수 있는 어, 그러한 어, 수준을 가졌다라고 생각을 했어요. 이 스마트폰이 있다면 최소한 이 정도의 퀄리티를 낼수 있다는 그 의미일 테니 다른 분들께서도 아주 좋게 잘 활용할 수 있을 것 같다는 라 생각이 들었습니다. 와우, it's incredible what Na Hong Jin could bring to life with the Galaxy S23 Ultra. And even more impressive, it was all filmed in low light. This all new experience helps everyone create epic content with Galaxy. Here's Uni to tell you more. Thanks, Drew. The Galaxy S23 Ultra takes the innovation of nitography to the next level. As you just saw, it has the power to bring the details of that ominous night to life. Just imagine the things you'll be able to create. All you need to do is bring your ideas and Ultra will do the rest. Filmmakers know that filming in low light can be challenging, often resulting in shaky footage, noise, glare, and color saturation. The Galaxy S23 Ultra is designed to tackle these challenges and help you capture pro-grade videos. Optical image stabilization, or OIS, is a technology that helps increase the steadiness of your footage. It adjusts the lens in the opposite direction of motion detected while filming. On the Galaxy S23 Ultra, we've doubled OIS's capabilities to increase the area in which motion can be offset. This OIS hardware works alongside adaptive VDIS to analyze and subdivide your movements and to recognize light conditions around you. Improved software and AI further strengthen the low-light video experience. A dedicated new image processing algorithm separates noise and details by performing multi-frame processing with AI, which combines multiple images across frames to reduce noise. The Galaxy S23 series uses an enhanced solution to reduce overexposure and color saturation in your videos. What this all means is that with nitography on the Galaxy S23 Ultra, your creations will be so good, the only thing left to do will be to share them. Nitography on the Galaxy S23 series isn't just for videos, it's for photos too. Come on, let's go. With our improved night solution, the image sensors on the Galaxy S23 series work to minimize visual noise and an AI-powered ISP algorithm enhances object details and color tone. This makes snapping a photo at night easier. And for portraits, AI Stereo Depth Map is able to detect individual objects. 
It can even separate a person's glasses from the background of your photo. So the details of your portrait are crisp and clear. See, Nitography on Galaxy S23 series brings you even more ways to capture what's around you. Now, let's bring it back to the real world. I'm really excited to try out the Galaxy S23 Ultra's camera at some of my favorite spots. Life gets busy and it can be hard to get everyone together, but when I do, I always try to take at least one group selfie with my friends and family. Before, I never really got asked to share my photos. But now, with the Galaxy S23 series, everyone always wants me to share photos with them. Take a look. That's the AI at work. When we're taking a group shot, the AI object aware engine recognizes different objects, like our hair and clothes, and separates them from the background. Then it enhances the details of each object for clear photos and videos. Meanwhile, the camera's dual pixel technology improves autofocus so you can see the depth and detail more accurately. And depending on the mood you want to convey in your selfies, we've added color tone, which lets you choose from natural or warm tone. And that's just the beginning of the epic camera experience that Galaxy S23 series provides. With Nitography, your gallery will be full of share-worthy photos and videos that truly capture your favorite memories in vivid color. So get ready, because everyone will be asking, hey, can you send me that? Ready? So it all started when I was at a friend's party. Mia, can you send me that? Sure. Everyone keeps asking. Mia, can you send me that? Even my French neighbor. Mia! Will you send me that? Not you. Sorry, Steve. Mia. Green light. I mean, all the time. Red light. Can you send me that? I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. These days, we all share important memories on social media. It's how we keep up with friends and family. I usually share vacation photos. And a lot of the times, the people who are there with me see my posts and ask for the originals to keep for their memories. Sharing full resolution files is simple with QuickShare. I can easily share original files, even to friends on a different platform. The Galaxy S23 series gives you the power to create and share. And with our most powerful camera yet, it has something for everyone, whether you're a professional or just love to take pictures with friends, family, or pets. These cameras combine incredible hardware and innovative software to take your photos and videos to the next level. The Galaxy S23 and S23 Plus bring you a 50 megapixel wide camera. And the Galaxy S23 Ultra provides our highest resolution with a 200 megapixel camera. Powered by a revolutionary image sensor, you can enjoy a groundbreaking professional camera experience and take advantage of everything from Super HDR to our AI camera, and that's across the entire Galaxy S23 series. Here's David to tell you more. The Galaxy S23 series offers impressive performance across the board, and the Galaxy S23 Ultra's design builds on that innovative foundation to provide tech that truly delivers. The Galaxy S23 series has powerful battery while maintaining the smartphone's compact form. The Galaxy S23 and S23 Plus have 3,900 milliamps and 4,700 milliamps, respectively. And for the S23 Ultra, we've maintained the 5,000 milliamp battery without increasing the device's size, even with the larger camera. We've improved the cooling system on the Galaxy S23 series, so your smartphone can regulate its temperature while maintaining powerful performance. The vapor chamber is central to this process and is now larger than before. So you can game or stream music and videos for even longer. As part of our commitment to open innovation, we've worked closely with our partners at Qualcomm to optimize the Galaxy experience with the brand new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. 
is the most powerful and efficient platform ever in a Galaxy smartphone. And it's the fastest Snapdragon ever. The newly designed CPU micro architecture boosts the processing abilities of the Galaxy S23 series by about 30% compared to last year. The CPU has eight cores, five dedicated to high performance and three for high efficiency, bringing you a difference you can feel with enhanced multi-core performance. When you're multitasking, you can listen to music, download new apps and scroll through your social media feeds with consistent and efficient processing. And today, you've seen all that the Galaxy S23 series camera can do. Capturing stunning photos in low light requires trillions of calculations per second. And we've optimized our highly efficient MPU architecture that balances performance and power by about 49%, using an AI algorithm to help you take epic photos and videos. And this year, the most significant improvement is the optimized GPU, which is approximately 41% faster and designed for power users. The GPU architecture has been enhanced for performance and efficiency, giving the Galaxy S23 series the ability to create graphics that can only be described as epic. It's all rooted in our philosophy that technology can be used to create the world we want, and that innovation can produce groundbreaking tech. Back to Drew to tell you more. With the Galaxy S23 series, you'll experience stronger performance across CPU, NPU, and GPU for faster and smoother gameplay. Upgrades to our GPU are essential to that experience, with optimized frames per second to provide our most powerful gaming experience yet. Our new GPU also enables a ray tracing module that makes your gaming experience more immersive and lifelike. Here, you can see two sets of gameplay. On the right, you can see the visuals enhanced by ray tracing. Look at the lights and reflections. The in-game lighting, reflections, and shadows are even more realistic, so you get a PC-like gaming experience. And now, gaming outdoors is even better. The entire Galaxy S23 series, Base Plus and Ultra, now features screens with a peak brightness of 1,750 nits. Our intelligent display adapts to the lighting of your environment and helps you see your screen clearly with three levels of brightness and color adjustments. To take the gaming experience even further, we continue to work with game studios, publishers, and game engine companies to optimize performance. The Galaxy experience pushes the boundaries of tech, providing premium holistic experiences from camera to gaming. It's driven by innovation designed with you in mind. Wow. Wait, is that a phone? Look at the performance, the graphics. That thing's a gaming machine, a new challenger. Is that Faker? That man's a gaming legend. Everyone, fasten your seatbelts. And here we go. As you can see, you get a powerful gaming experience with the Galaxy S23 series. And Ultra lets you accomplish more in ways that work best for you. So, for the first time, we're bringing the power of Ultra to our PCs. Introducing the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. This is the stunning Galaxy Book 3 Ultra right here. It has a sleek, premium design with a full glass display, a slim bezel, 
and a much wider touchpad. And even though it's thin, it has multiple ports, so you don't need to carry around a USB hub. It's the most advanced PC in the Galaxy Book 3 lineup. And you're probably asking yourself, what are the specs? Let's take a look. The Galaxy Book 3 Ultra is equipped with the latest 13th gen Intel Core processor. You can choose from the Core i7 or i9, and its powerful H-series CPU can support up to 45 watts for high performance. Combine that with the NVIDIA RTX 4070 laptop GPU, and you have the strongest CPU and GPU in the Galaxy Book series. There are also two new Pro models, the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360, for those who want the benefits of a tablet and a PC in one, and the Galaxy Book 3 Pro for everyday performance. I'm super excited that the Pro and Ultra lineups bring our impressive dynamic AMOLED 2X displays to our PCs for the very first time ever. Let's see how people are reacting to the Ultra unveil. It seems like people want to see our new PCs in action. So I've asked my friends to help me show you what they can create. Hey, we've been challenged to show off what the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra can do. Can you help? Of course, I started creating this model. I'm adding some details here. The Galaxy Book 3 Ultra features an expanded 16 by 10 ratio. With a new Chris 3K display, that means it's optimized to view more content. And with the new dynamic AMOLED 2X display, the 120% color volume really makes details pop. When you're creating a video, the NVIDIA RTX 4070 laptop GPU helps you bring your imagination to life. It's great for editing videos, live streaming, or creating complex 3D renderings, like this one. Thanks to the 14 core, 13th gen Intel Core processor, it delivers super fast processing and high bandwidth. That is critical to accelerate content creation and productivity workloads, including complex data heavy projects. The Galaxy Book 3 Ultra's 120 hz refresh rate and new GPU provide an incredible gaming experience. Its response is fast and smooth, bringing you next level gaming. And when you combine those visuals with powerful quad speakers, you can really immerse yourself into the world of your game. When you're playing with a team, being on mic is part of the fun. Run, 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 into the building. The studio quality microphone has AI noise cancellation, so your voice can be heard with no distractions. Yes! It looks like our rendering is done. That looks awesome. I'm glad you like it. I'll see you later. We just saw how the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra can help you work and play. But what makes a laptop a laptop is the ability to take it wherever you go. Let's check in with another friend. She's a creative influencer who's always on the go. Her Galaxy Book 3 Ultra lets her do her best work virtually anywhere. The Galaxy Book 3 Ultra and Pro Series turns any location into a workspace with advanced phone to PC connectivity, thanks to our partnership with Microsoft. Instant Hotspot makes it quick and easy to connect to your phone's mobile network. No need to retype your password, it's just one click. And now, you can continue browsing the recent website from your phone right on your PC. When you're working remotely, multi-device connectivity comes in handy. With multi-control, interactions between devices is super seamless and even simpler to control, all from one single point of input. You can even copy and paste across displays. And with second screen, you can turn your tablet into a second display for your PC to make full use of your PC, phone, and tablet all at once. Hey, how's it coming? I'm almost done. I'm just gonna add one more thing. Sure. With intuitive phone to PC connectivity, it's easy to transfer uncompressed RAW images. Once paired through Expert RAW, images sync automatically to the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. So you can edit in Adobe Lightroom and truly make your visions come to life. Expert RAW lets you control more aspects of the photography experience from start to finish. Ryan. Hey.
Hey, how's it going? I saw the post on social and it inspired me. Let me show you. All right, cool. With a flexible two-in-one form factor, the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 brings you multiple ways to use your PC and create in ways that suit you best. It has touchscreen and S Pen capabilities, letting you sketch, draw, and write in more ways. And with nearly zero S Pen latency, you can have a true-to-life pen-on-paper experience. Hey, what is that? Hold on just one second. So what do you think? That looks amazing. I'm impressed. Thanks team for showing us how the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra and Pro Series can be used to create epic projects. Optimizing your time and creating seamless interactions between your connected devices. Because when it comes to creativity, your imagination is the only limit. And the Galaxy Book 3 series is up to the task. You can do so much with the new Galaxy Book 3 Ultra and Galaxy Book 3 Pro series, and we can't wait to see what you create. We designed these PCs to offer powerful performance through GPU and CPU enhancements, the bright and accurate colors of our dynamic AMOLED 2X display, and a multi-port design. It's all part of the Galaxy experience, which brings you more choice and connection across the ecosystem. To tell you more, here's Kim. The Galaxy Experience is designed to fit your unique lifestyle and preferences. It's all about empowering you to customize and personalize how you use your devices together. And now we're bringing you even more options so that everyone in the family can do more with Galaxy. Your phone should reflect who you are from the outside in. With One UI, you can truly make your smartphone your own by selecting up to 15 photos and videos of your favorite memories for your lock screen. Every part of the lock screen can be customized so it looks and feels how you want it to. Smart Suggestions helps you personalize your experience even further by recommending apps and actions when you'd usually use them. Like when you put in your Buds 2 Pro, Smart suggestions will remember that you usually listen to Spotify and pull up a custom playlist. Privacy and security are essential when it comes to your connected experience. And there's no privacy without security. Even when you're getting your phone fixed. Maintenance mode limits access to your personal data. When your phone is being repaired, customer service staff won't be able to see your messages, gallery, or files. It also keeps all the apps you've downloaded private, like banking apps. Your phone's all set. When you turn on maintenance mode, you're the only person who can turn it off by using the verification method of your choice. Do you know how to check the security and privacy status of your phone? One UI 5 combines privacy and security controls into one streamlined dashboard so you can see security status and potential fixes in one place, because staying protected should be simple and intuitive. We innovate to bring you and your family more peace of mind through enhanced safety features. It's a foundational part of the Galaxy experience. Ready to get some work done? Sure. <laughs> Great. Being productive comes easily with upgraded Samsung Notes, you can share a work in progress or co-edit in real time. And for even more collaboration, edit Samsung Notes together in Google Meet. I feel like we need a different photo. Good idea, let me find one. The S Pen brings you flexible ways to use your devices, helping you to be more productive. Handwriting to text with the S Pen is supported in select Google apps, such as Chrome or YouTube. It's super helpful when it comes to quick searches and note-taking. It switches to text just like that. 
Perfect. That looks great. I'm home. Oh, my dad's here. I gotta go. See you in class tomorrow. Galaxy truly is for the whole family, bringing you more creativity, more convenience, and more connection. It's gonna start. <laughs> You can bring two of the freestyle projectors together to create a bigger, wider, and more immersive view with improved aspect ratio and minimized black bars. With a single tap, theater mode gets your home ready for your favorite film. Activating do not disturb mode so you can watch uninterrupted. SmartThings brings you more convenience and connectivity from your smartphone, to the freestyle and across your devices. It even works seamlessly with non-Samsung products and is now compliant with Matter standards. When using the new SmartThings station, you can charge your devices, activate preset routines, or use it as a hub to connect your smart devices and appliances. Flexibility is the foundation of the Galaxy experience. With more options, you can use your technology your way. With increased customization, stronger privacy and security, and a seamless ecosystem, we bring you more ways to personalize your experiences to fit your lifestyle. The Galaxy Experience is designed to fit your lifestyle, no matter how you like to use your tech. The Galaxy S23 series will come with One UI 5.1, and we're excited to announce that One UI 5.1 will be rolling out to more Galaxy devices soon. With nitography, a high-res camera, and powerful performance, the Galaxy S23 series delivers our most advanced mobile experience yet. Galaxy S23 series will be available for pre-order starting today. Pricing starts at $799, with the S23 Plus at $999, and the S23 Ultra at $1,199. The S22 will be available in the US starting at $699. You can also pre-order the Galaxy Book 3 Pro series today with a 16-inch Book 3 Pro starting at $1,249, and the Book 3 Pro 360 starting at $1,399. Or pre-order the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra on February 14th, starting at $2,199. We are committed to delivering powerful premium tech that not only helps you, but also contributes to sustainable future. Here's Mark to tell you more. Today you've heard about how our devices bring you powerful and exciting experiences to match your lifestyle. We're committed to making these experiences more sustainable by bringing innovation and sustainability together to catalyze positive change today and more importantly, for the future. Samsung's everyday sustainability commitment starts by addressing climate change. This means achieving net zero carbon emissions in all our owned consumer products operations by the end of 2030. To move faster to advance these goals, we designed the Galaxy S23 series with the planet and you in mind. From the materials we chose for the product, to what the packaging is made from, to how long it sustains its best performance. Let me tell you more. The Galaxy S23 series incorporates more recycled materials than any other Galaxy smartphone to date. Specifically, the Galaxy S23 Ultra features recycled materials in 12 components, including internal and for the first time, external components. That's double the amount we use for the Galaxy S22 Ultra and we're introducing new pre-consumer recycled materials like aluminum 
and glass, and continuing the use of recycled ocean-bound plastics in the device. The Galaxy S23 series is the first to use Corning Gorilla Glass Victus II, which contains 22% pre-consumer recycled glass. On the back of the device, we also use PET film, made with up to 80% recycled material. And we're working to eliminate single-use plastics from packaging. The Galaxy S23 series comes in a redesigned box made with paper that's 100% recycled and certified as sustainably sourced. Integrating sustainability into the product experience doesn't stop with the Galaxy S23 series. The Galaxy Book 3 series also uses recycled ocean-bound plastic and post-consumer material. Look, we all know that a more sustainable lifestyle requires innovative technology that's built to last. And that's why the Galaxy S23 series comes with up to four generations of OS upgrades and five years of security updates. Samsung opens up endless possibilities that enrich our lives and help create a more sustainable future. It's the result of innovation and sustainability working together without compromise and open collaboration with like-minded partners who help, who help us to bring the best experiences to you. To tell you more, please welcome back TM Rowe. Thank you so much. Over the years, we have reshaped the mobile industry. We have given people better choices. Through our commitment to open collaboration and open innovation, we are a galaxy of trusted partners, including and especially Qualcomm and Google. Today, we are transforming the future of mobile once again by building the next XR experience together. We foresee a future in which immersive shared experiences enhance and enrich people's lives, revolutionizing how we connect with one another, even on opposite sides of the planet. We'll share real-life experiences in real time, new possibilities for working and playing that we barely even imagine today. To reveal more about how we are building this future, I am excited to welcome two very special guests to the UNPAC stage. Cristiano Amon is the president and CEO of Qualcomm. He started his career as an engineer, like me, and helped move mobile technology forward through a number of groundbreaking products and services. Hiroshi Lackheimer is... <laughs> is Google's senior vice president for platforms and ecosystems, and one of the visionaries behind the pioneering, uh, uh, behind the pioneering Android ecosystem. Let's give them a warm welcome. We are so glad you are with us. I would like to invite Cristiano to kick this off. Thank you so much, TM. It's really great to be here. And I want to congratulate you and the entire Samsung team on the launch of the amazing Samsung Galaxy S23 series. This device has truly set the industry benchmark. Qualcomm and Samsung have a very long story of collaboration and innovation. It's a partnership that has enabled us to deliver the best mobile experience for more than 25 years. Recently, our relationship has grown even closer as we continue to push the boundaries of what's possible to deliver leading premium experiences. In the Galaxy S23, 
is the greatest example. We're thrilled that this incredible smartphone is powered by the world's fastest and most power efficient Snapdragon ever. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform for Galaxy. It features leading system processing performance as well as groundbreaking AI that enables truly extraordinary experiences. This includes the AI power cognitive ISP, which enhances photos and videos in real time for professional quality camera experiences, even in dark settings. And the Qualcomm Adreno GPU is optimized to provide ultra-realistic lightning and reflections for desktop-level gameplay. And of course, it delivers the ultimate in connectivity with the world's best and most reliable 5G modem RF system, as well as industry-leading Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Galaxy fans across the globe are going to love this device. But we're also collaborating to bring next generation experiences to other Galaxy products, including laptops, tablets, XR, and more. And in XR, we're working to create a new era of highly immersive digital experiences that blur the lines between our physical and digital worlds. With our Snapdragon XR technology, along with Samsung amazing products and Google experiences, we have the foundation to make these opportunities a reality and drive the future of the spatial internet. Together, we're truly driving the industry forward in developing technologies and devices that meet the needs of Galaxy users today and tomorrow. Thank you for having me, TM. Super excited to be here, and congratulations again on incredible launch of Galaxy S23. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cristiano. Such an exciting vision for all of us. For even more, please take it away, Hiroshi. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here today. <laughs> massive, massive congratulations to the Samsung team. I cannot wait to get my hands on the S23 Ultra in green. Actually, I have a secret. I've been using it for a while. I love it. It's great. So congratulations. Uh, TM and I last shared the stage together three years ago here in San Francisco. I'm truly humbled and inspired by how our partnership hasn't skipped a beat since then, as we've delivered many new experiences that empower you to do more with Google. Our deep collaboration around Google Meet and Messages has been super helpful in bringing people closer together. This includes our rollout of the RCS messaging standard which enables end-to-end -end encryption to keep your communications safe and secure. We've also doubled down on optimizing for large screens to enhance what you can do on Samsung's foldables and tablets. And on the platform side, we've built a best-in-class wearable platform in Wear OS. With the launch of Wear OS 3 in 2021, there are now over three times more active Wear OS watches around the world than before. An exciting space where Google has been investing in for a long time across both experiences and technology is AR and VR. These technologies are integral to the new phase of computing as it can change the way we interact with people and information to get things done in the real world. But delivering this next generation of experiences requires cutting edge advanced hardware and software. That's why our collaboration with Samsung and Qualcomm is so exciting. Google has been investing in AR experiences that are more immersive and fundamentally different from traditional 2D formats for quite some time. On mobile, we've scaled AR core to over 1 billion Android devices. We've also brought AR to Search, YouTube, and Google Maps. And Google Lens is now being used for more than 8 billion visual searches per month. These examples are just a prelude to our long-term vision. We're working towards a new generation of computing enabled by immersive experiences across brand new form factors that will further elevate what you can do with Google. All this is incredibly exciting from the hardware and, and core technolo technological capabilities to the apps and services. I cannot wait to see what we build together.
Thank you, Joyce. And thank you again, Cristiano. Open, proven, trusted collaboration with iconic industry leaders, a whole greater than the sum of its parts, bringing the best of our technologies together to transform the future of human connection. Please give a warm hand to our friends. I am grateful for the chance to connect with all of you today, online and in person. Thank you so much for being part of this unpack. I will see you again soon. Well, that was it for uh, Samsung's Unpacked 2023, the first one of the year. And as there were a lot of like things that we expected, but some surprises here and there too. I know the chat was going crazy and still is. Uh, Sam, were you? what were you most surprised by? I don't think anyone was surprised that we saw the Galaxy S23 series or even the Galaxy Book 3s. Uh, mm -hmm. What was your favorite? Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was a little weird to see how maybe how much time they spent on the S23 Ultra camera. They had yeah. not one, but two like big filmmakers come out talking about, and then they did the, the thing that people have been doing for the last decade. It's we use the phones to shoot a movie. It's like, guys, we know, we know you can do this. Yeah. I don't get me wrong. Like, it's interesting to see that like, okay, Hey, there's a big new 200 megapixel sensor and you know, yeah. it has higher quality and you know, this is how you show it off. But they, they, they spent a really a lot of time on it and they didn't talk much else about the rest of the phone's right. um, features, uh, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, I also agree. I mean, I want to shout out a lot of uh, the sentiments that are going on in the chat right now. We saw um, uh, XERO0 says Samsung and Sony have disappointed me. We had Shane who said that was lackluster. Um, people are, are expecting other, were expecting other devices today. Like I believe Chulhua says, uh, I guess Z Fold and tablet are in summer. And then J Jadrian Jr. Mitchell says we're not getting another tab till 2024. I think people are also disappointed by the prices. We have a very strong uh, uh, comment from Springles who says that was pathetic IMO. Ooh. I I think that that's that's harsh, but maybe deserved. I don't know that it was pathetic. I personally wasn't expecting that last segment about XR uh, to happen. We can yeah, dive think, into that. I think yeah. that that's definitely the big surprise. Um, you know, it's like someone else, Ags Raider said, uh, all I heard was camera this, camera that, and I think that is is definitely the first half of the presentation. There was a, definitely a lot of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, the Faiz Alphanaisa in the uh, Alphanaisa in the chat says it's literally an S22 with a slight back design upgrade. Haha. -ha. Yeah, especially if you're looking at the S22 and S, uh, S23 and S23 Plus, the main change is that the contour cut housing for the cameras is gone. Right, um, and that that wasn't even on the Ultra series to, in the first place. Yeah. So the Ultra design looks almost exactly the same as last year's S22 yeah. Ultra for the new S23 Ultra. Especially from the outside. I mean, some of the internals have changed and, and to uh, give you all the details, you can always head on over to Engadget.com. We have the full details published there already. I have seen these phones in person. I have seen the laptops in person. So I actually um, wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. So, I, so one thing they didn't really mention a lot on stream is that I've heard that the displays are flatter uh, this year yeah. than before. Did you notice that when you got to use them? I, I, uh, I'm i not a person with a lot of, uh, as our former coworker Chris Velasco would say, a lot of hand meat, right? So when I grab a phone, <laughs> my my palm isn't kind of like spilling over onto the sides. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did find it annoying when the in Galaxy older S23 curved screen phones, like older Samsung Galaxy flagships, uh, yeah, when the screen would be too curved, it would trigger the edge panel a little too much. This time around, I, I noticed that didn't happen as much, that's for sure. But you've still got sort of the rounded edge look uh, for, the, for the S23 Ultra, which kind of like, mm -hmm. It was very, and then, very, but very, it, very, but very it's minimal. even more flat on the the S twenty three and the plus. 
The S23 things are straight up flat screens. They're not okay. even slightly curved at all. Yeah. So they've, I, I believe the S22s were already like that. They're more flat than Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting to see that like finally come full circle because for, for you know, back in the S4, S5 series, everything was flat. Then the X6 yeah. Edge came along and then we went to like curved screens for like almost 10 years. And yeah. now we're like back all the way to everything has flat screens again. We got Marina Midori in the chat asking if there's an improved macro mode. The S22 Ultra macro uh, is terrible. There's a lot of camera enhancements here that we also didn't hear about ahead of time. The nitography stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we heard about the AI uh, subject tracking or subject folk something like about the subject detection right mm -hmm. uh, but we don't really know how that alongside macro mode and things like that will perform until we get a review unit uh, to test so I would say stay tuned for our full review on that and Marina that's one question that we'll come back to um, hopefully you'll come back for the next time we you know do one of these lives uh, to answer your question um, there was AXA AXA in the chat also mentioned global Snapdragon for all the phones uh, and that that is the <clears> biggest or best news here. I think I think that's great. Honestly, I think yeah, and I that's hope actually, it doesn't affect pricing too. And that's actually a good segue into talking about, you know, some people were asking before the stream, but they're like, okay, now we finally have official confirmation. We have the Snapdragon. This is like the longest name of all time. So the Snapdragon <laughs> yep. uh, Gen 2 mobile platform for Galaxy chip. Yeah. Uh, which is a real mouthful, but basically what it is is a slightly customized version of the general, you know, the the stock Snapdragon Gen 2 chip. And yeah. noticeably, the big difference is the clock speeds, which yep. uh, is 3.2 gigahertz on the standard Gen 2, and it's 3.25-ish gigahertz, uh, sorry, 3.35-ish gigahertz for the Snapdragon Galaxy. And so that's the difference about 150 megahertz on pure clock speeds. I, honestly, I'm not sure if that's something you're going to be able to tell in use because smartphone chips are already so fast that like, right. you know, like, you know, if I, if I turn a certain setting on in Genshin Impact, maybe I'm going to get a few more FPS, maybe, yeah. but it's hard. It's right. hard to imagine. Are you more excited about the, the hardware accelerated ray tracing that the HN2 brings? That, I, people have been talking about <laughs> ray tracing on cell phones for a long time. And there are like two apps where you can like kind of see something. It's going to yeah. need to be a lot more widespread before I get uh, more, more, a lot more excited about that, you know, ray tracing yeah. on phones. Mahesh Gore in the chat says, why didn't they talk about design? I think that's because nothing much has changed here. Really, the, there, there the was big a quick, change. Yeah, there's a quick little demo where they like showed them removing the contour cut from the like S20 three and s23 plus because that yeah. was like kind of like the distinguishing design factor on the last two galaxy s phones and then right. now that's gone and so i think you know it's nice because it, now all the phones have the same general back design but at the same time like it depends they look kind of plain but if you really yeah. like that minimalist design okay there's you know there's something to it um I believe Shiva Shakti Prasad in the chat also asked, anybody notice there was dual laser focus module at the back? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was a single one. I'm not sure, Sam. Yeah, and, and, you know, so that, that's correct. I mean, that, that's one of the difference differentiations on the S23 Ultra is that it has that laser autofocus system that is not available on the two more affordable uh, models. Because uh, we got some Apple haters in the chat. Calvin Lee says iPhone 14 has a black burn spot. They call it Dynamic Island, <laughs> and Retronix says Dynamic Trash. All right, y'all, you're hilarious. Uh, but that is a good point to bring up. Okay, Kiss Belinda also says I love this Apple Galaxy S23. I personally noticed a lot of Apple like features when they were talking about One UI 5.1. I think mm -hmm. that that's something I, I call out in my hands-on, which is uh, some of those features, right? The lock screen uh, editing uh, page, as well as the smart widget. You got the focus modes. You've got the image clipper. Uh, if you haven't seen our hands-on video yet, I demonstrated every single one of those features uh, on our video, so you can check out how it actually works. Um, but yeah, no, those seem ripped right out of iOS 16. I was going to say, they didn't talk at all about the S Pen really um yeah and so symbol, yeah so yeah so what was, what was the clipping feature that you used it was uh it's basically part of one ui 5.1 you don't only have you don't you're not uh, limited to the s pen to use it right you can use your mm -hmm. finger to long press on a f subject in your photo and the system will like cut it out from the background and then you can drag and drop it somewhere else okay so, so uh, nothing yeah. not a ton in the way of new s pen dedicated features right literally none 
I will tell you, there are no new S Pen features. S Pen same as before. That's I a little. Three. That's a little surprising because we were just talking about like the hair to the note and to see like nothing new is yeah, yeah. a choice. I I think it's. I don't know if they're like out of their mind with like update ideas for the S Pen, right? Like the one time they tried to update the S Pen, they like made it so you can use it as a remote control and trigger certain things. Right, like, right. Can you use that as a remote camera shutter and stuff like that? Yeah, I feel like that's really. I, what are the okay tell us chat tell us what other ideas you would have for improving the s pen like they're already there with like latency size i guess battery life minimal that, that's a good um, point because i'm like struggling to think of like new features that i want mm -hmm. um unless they're like full like wacom like you know high-end digital art features which i'm not sure makes a ton of sense but yeah uh, a lot of people also asked, uh, Nick Nysom, for example, mm. as if the S23 has satellite service. I think when we were talking about um, the chipset, who quite a few people chimed in to ask if there was satellite service. I don't believe it was mentioned, but Sam, can you confirm? I don't think they, they haven't heard anything about it and I didn't yeah. mention it. That um, would require the new X, I want to say 70 modem. The X, uh, it was just announced at CES, the Snapdragon mm -hmm. satellite feature. Uh, and I believe if they had added that, they would have made a 15 minute segment. Yeah, you, about... you, we, they would have heard about it. And <laughs> even back at CS, they mentioned that devices that support this um, service won't be available until like the end of 2023 at the earliest. So yeah. even if they are able to like backwards add it to the S23 Ultra, it won't be available until later this year regardless exactly so I, I don't think the feature is at even live just yet uh so uh, yeah. i have thoughts on that on on that snapdragon satellite thing but we can talk another time okay so I actually uh, so i'm looking at the spec sheet now do you want to do a quick yes. rundown um so absolutely to start with uh pricing um mm -hmm. so the s the standard s23 starts at 799.99 the s23 plus jumps up 200 dollars to 999.99 and then mm -hmm. the Galaxy S23 Ultra starts at eleven ninety nine ninety nine, so two hundred price gap between all the all the variants. Um, and obviously, these are U.S. pricings. They are you know things may change depending on your region. And they're going to keep selling the S22 starting at seven hundred dollars, so that's mm -hmm. not bad. Um, a good question in the chat. Sammy asks, "What are the zoom capabilities in respect to the S22 Ultra?" Uh, same. <laughs> the, they're the same. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you get a three X optical zoom on the S23 and S23 Plus, up to 30x digital zoom. And then on the S23 Ultra, you get a 3x optical, a 10x optical, and then all the way up to 100x digital zoom. Yeah. Um, and so that's so, un unchanged from before, but you do get that new 200 megapixel sensor, which you know might have you know some impact on on zoom shots. Yeah, with all that binning that they were doing, right? Tetra Square binning for for fifty megapixel pictures, or you can get two hundred megapixels if you want. I will say in mm -hmm. my hands on that even in my hands on, I took uh, photos with fifty megapixels, two hundred megapixels, and the regular default twelve megapixels mode. Uh, the picture at that base level twelve megapixels is the best. Um, the detail on the like surface texture of a lemon at the event was m the most clear uh, in that in that twelve megapixel photo at two hundred megapixels pixels you would think there's more detail but there's not as much light right there's just not much um light captured in the picture so you don't get mm -hmm. to see nuances in the color as well um so there you go sammy yeah, i hope and, that and, answered your question and just yeah just to be clear that 200 megapixel sensor for that 23 ultra that's the primary you know main camera the ultra wide sensor is 12 megapixels and then the telephoto lens is 10 megapixels so you're not getting that 200 megapixel ultra. sensor for everything it's only on the main camera exactly uh speaking of the cameras to the uh, s23 uh triple cameras are the same as the s22's triple cameras they really did not upgrade things here but you know what they did upgrade across the entire line the selfie camera mm. um so yeah the... as, 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 as resident <laughs> selfie queen uh, how do you feel about the the new dual mode um autofocus uh pixels uh the dual pixels yeah okay so i mean I, I I couldn't really test it out very well in person because mm -hmm. it's like, what am I supposed to do? Like shake, 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 and then take. I tried and it worked. The pictures came out clear, um, which is nice. The to 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 clarify the specs for y'all, the S twenty three and S twenty three plus now have that twelve megapixel uh, sensor that is bigger than last year's. Uh, but before they all on the S twenty twos, they had only ten megapixels. So that's more an obvious step up. For the S twenty three Ultra, it also has the same S twenty uh, same twelve megapixel. Uh, sensor up front 
but it might seem like a downgrade from the S22 Ultra because the S22 Ultra had a 40 megapixel uh, front camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, the difference is that the sensor this year is actually bigger than that 40 megapixel one. So yep. it still would be, it still should deliver better selfies. So we'll see. Um, I also, Nick, oh, yeah. I was going to say, I also saw a lot of people asking about battery capacity. So uh, let's just cover that real quick. Yes. Battery capacity on the standard S23 is 3,900 milliamp hours, uh, which is up a little bit from last year's uh, S22. And it's a similar for the S23 Plus, which is now at 4,700 milliamp hours. Um, So up a little bit from last year. And the S23 uh, Ultra is staying the same at 5,000 milliamp hours. And that's interesting because I know a lot of people were like complaining that like they didn't see a higher battery capacity which means right. Samsung is really relying on improved energy and efficiency in the chip exactly. to deliver more longevity. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, we haven't had a chance to test this out. We'll see how that does in the real world. Um, yeah. But I think it's interesting that we're kind of seeing the limit on no, no, not a lot of smartphone manufacturers in general are going above 5,000 milliamp hours for their batteries. And so it seems like that's kind of where the industry is topping out and then relying, relying on silicon can efficiency upgrades to kind of del- go that extra step of giving you more battery life, usable battery life. And I think that that's where in the industry, or at least in the world, we're seeing more uh, significant jumps, right? Because we're not seeing battery technology improve that much, but we are seeing processor and nanometer design uh, mm-hmm. improve by leaps and bounds. I think we were stuck on, what was it, like 10 nanometer for a long time, and then now we're dropping down to four, and that's the stuff that will really get the energy and efficiency uh, much more significantly improved. So that's good. A lot of, uh, Smith Patel has been asking, uh, did they add satellite connectivity? We're saying, we, we've answered this, but prop, we don't, we, we think that if they did, they would have said something more obviously, mm-hmm. so the idea is no. But we will clarify with Samsung uh, soon. Um, um, uh, another another small differentiation between the various models is that Mm -hmm. the S23 Plus and S23 Ultra have UWB ultra wideband connectivity, which is Mm -hmm. like important for certain smart home devices. Or if you, you know, if you have the right car, you can kind of use it as a keyless entry. The standard S23 does not have UWB. So one kind of uh, important consideration for anyone looking at those models. Um, someone whose name is spelled that looks like Michael but seems to be maybe pronounced Michiel uh, Jaeger in the chat says there was quite a lot of uh, talk about environment and longevity the most simple thing they could have done is to give security updates for a longer time which they didn't do it should be six or seven years of security updates I will say though four years of OS updates and five years of security updates is longer than a lot of Android phones used to offer. I see it as an improvement already, um, but you know, obviously, more years of support would be better for the environment. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Mac Timball also says there's a better vapor chamber and longer battery. I don't know about longer battery just yet. Let, let's let's test that. But yes, there is a better vapor chamber design uh, in the frames of all these things. And speaking of sustainability, just now too, I like that um, there was uh mention of some of the new materials that are going yeah, some into of, the some s23 the, samsung is committing to using more ocean bound plastic inside the device i think they you know there's some very small details like the the lock key is now made from recycled plastic um yeah a lot and, of uh recovered uh, discarded fishing net went into the plastics too <laughs> Yeah, and then I think, um, and this is obviously not purely Samsung, but uh, Corning's Gorilla Glass Victus 2 is also made from about 25% recycled material. Yes. So you are getting a little bit of that, you know, sustainability impact. Um, And obviously, Samsung said they're trying to remove any sort of uh, plastic use from the packaging, which is nice. Um, that's, really a, a lot, that's something a lot of manufacturers have been going, uh, moving towards. Finally. That, you know. Yes. Uh, th- great. Uh, just keep yeah. doing that. Um, there's, there's no reason why packaging should not be completely recyclable. I agree. Uh, Peter S. in the chat had a question that, Sam, I think you can answer. Do mm-hmm. the new phones support Wi-Fi 6E? Let me double check. I believe they do. Yeah. Um, Meanwhile, uh, for the people who are disappointed that there were no uh, new buds, yeah, ZB Vlogging rightly points out there some new buds just came out in August. Usually you wait a year or two for new Galaxy Buds. Yep, Go on, and, I, and I can confirm it is Wi-Fi 6E across the board for every model. Dope. Um, Nick the Greek says they didn't point out anything about the longevity of the battery. Yeah, they didn't even say anything about estimated battery life. Uh, going back to the event for a little bit, uh, Ridley Scott. Look, this the, the people who are like talking about Apple comparisons here. Yeah, this event like they really borrowed from Apple's playbook too, right? They have like well known uh, filmmakers come through and be like, "Oh, we shot this on iPhone," and so we shot this on the S twenty three Ultra. Come up with your own idea, Samsung. 
I'm sick of this. I, I just I just need to, I just need someone any I don't care who it is to figure out a better way of like demoing camera features than hiring yeah. your you know your your most favorite recent big name Hollywood director. Or more likely paying off a big time big name director going like and, and telling them what to say, right? Like I get that the footage is probably impressive and you probably could shoot very good footage with these S23 Ultras, but uh which by the way reminds me that uh to tell y'all that one of the new things the S23 Ultra can do is shoot 8K video at up to 30 FPS, which, which is was, up which is up from 24 last year. So not a huge difference. And if you're a filmmaker, you're probably shooting at 24 FPS anyways. But what do I know? Uh, clearly, I am not a Hollywood director. Yeah. And there you go. Uh, Sammy goes, they didn't even increase the brightness. Actually, the screen brightness now hits up to 1750, uh, 1750 nits in outdoor boost mode. Uh, and the main, like the regular mode goes up to 1200 nits. And I was going to say, that's for every device, um, which is actually interesting mm -hmm. because last year, the ultra screen was slightly brighter than the 23 plus and the, or the 22 plus and the standard 22. So it's nice seeing mm -hmm. that like really high peakness all the way across the board. Yeah, Srinivasan says the film director's promo was laughable for me. Yeah, me too. Uh, the and Harry Ev Harvey Evans, I'll get to your question in a little bit. But ZFG Mike three fifty Z says, what's the deal with the under display front camera that we're all still waiting for? Yeah, we're still waiting. I know Samsung's employed this technology in at least the Galaxy Fold, right? Uh, which is where they want more of an immersive full screen experience. I guess this one may be less important to them. Uh, and then back to Harvey Evans's question, which is, should you upgrade from the iPhone 12? I mean, it's a big OS jump for you, uh, depending on how willing you are to part with iOS. I think you will find, uh, yes, this to be a good upgrade, but I will say we're very early in the year to be, I mean, depending on your upgrade cycle, right? This is the first flagship smartphone launch of 2023. Mm -hmm. Come August, there's going to be so many more new phones. By summer, we're going to see a few more new phones as well. So it really depends on what you're looking for. I personally always hold out for pixels. Anytime anyone's talking about Android phones, just because that the cameras are the most important to me and Google tends to excel there. But, uh, you know, if you're already itching to get the new Samsung S23, you can, uh, speaking of, a lot of people were complaining about the pre-order bundles during uh, the chat just now. I have not paid attention. I think you get like a hundred dollar credit for trading in, but that's something we need to look into. Sam, anything uh, that you wanted to point out about the phones before we move on to the other products that Samsung talked about? Um, I think that's mostly, oh, uh, talk about colors. So yeah. by by default, there will be four colors, uh, the black, cream, green, and lavender. However, if you order from Samsung.com, there are four online exclusive colors, which are graphite, sky blue, lime, and red. Mm, so I know I like red, red's, red's always a popular color, um, but if you want it, you have to go order on Samsung.com. Uh, that's how it is. Yeah. That's true. Um, all right, so let's move on to the uh, other products. We know Samsung also unveiled new laptops, the Galaxy Book 3, Book 3, I'm sorry, the Galaxy Book 3 Pro, the Book 3 Pro 360, and the Book 3 Ultra. I'm not going to talk about the rest of the Galaxy Book 3 lineup other than the I was Ultra. Say, because there's, there's technically, there's five total new laptops. It's but so they didn't, confusing. Um, they didn't talk much about them. And a lot of them are just like slightly different spec variations or size variations. Um, so like you said, in general, there's the Galaxy Book 3, the Galaxy mm -hmm. Book 3 Pro? 360. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra, which are the three main lines. And then there's well, pro those pro versions of the Galaxy Book 3 and the 3360. That's just a lot of a uh, that's very very <laughs> confusing y'all. There's just a lot of stuff that's uh, a mess right now. I don't think Samsung even knows what is going to be, you know, selling and, and in what countries. I think that's why there's some confusion if you see any uh, in our own articles or in Samsung's material. There's probably different SKUs that are available in different parts of the world, and they're all a mess right now. Uh, the Book 3 Ultra is the most straightforward. This is a single uh, laptop, only available in 16 inch, but it does come in two configurations. One that has a Core i7 uh, processor with an RTX 4050 GPU, or the higher powered one, which is the Core i9 with an NVIDIA RTX 4070. Sam, are you impressed by these specs? Uh, I mean, Yes and no. I mean, so it's weird because like in the in the in the presentation, Samsung was like, this is uh, the most powerful GPU we've put in a Galaxy book yet. And yeah. technically, yes, true. But at yeah. the same time, it's like 
this is the 4070, which is already two tiers down from the top end of like NVIDIA's range, which goes right. to 4090, 4080, and then you get to the 4070. And then you go, you know, you have the choice between that or the 4050. So I, I love the I love the support for discrete GPUs. This is great as a gamer. Mm-hmm. You know, it gives you the ability to like, oh, I can play some, you know, decent titles without needing to rely on like, you know, cloud gaming or stuff like that. And then you can still yeah. do it, use it for work, for video editing, photo editing, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I mean, let's not get too crazy about this being like a super crazy, like, you know, portable workstation. That's not what it is. It is pretty portable, right? I mean, like, I, again, I, I play with it. I lifted it. It's heftier than the regular uh, Galaxy Book 3s, but mm-hmm. it's uh, it's still very thin and light for the price. I mean, I think it's comparable to even the LG Grams. It's heavier, but it, it also packs more power. And, and a lot a couple- of LG Grams yeah. don't have a discrete graphics card, so there no. is there is that. Exactly. Um, so let me let me ask you. I saw a lot of people in chat talking about, hey, it looks like a MacBook. I had one person like ping me in like side chats, like, so is this like just a one to one Samsung version of a MacBook Pro? And I was like, I had to laugh because it's like, you know, there are definite design similarities, but did that come across in person? Bro, I <laughs> in my hands on, I wrote like, honestly, I quoting myself here. Honestly, they look a little bit uh, boring at this point, right? Because the last three or two generations of the Galaxy books have looked exactly the same, which is like MacBooks. They look like MacBooks. And we didn't um, get any fun colors like we did on previous uh, exactly. models. Exactly. And even the previous models, like the colors were like uh, wine red, sort of, kind of. But then like mm-hmm. in the orange light that we were in in the demos, they just didn't look that great. So I'm not... Yeah, I think the look is boring. I still prefer the look of the Galaxy Book Flex that I, I still am using up to today. Um, really quickly, I want to answer a couple of people in the chat, including Mate or MAIT511 says, what's the waterproof rating on the S23 Ultra? The entire S23 phone series uh, is IP68 rated, so same as before. Um, but no, back to the back to the laptop really quick. The screen is like a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, refreshing at 120 hertz. It will support the DCI P3 color spectrum. Um, and I mean, I sort of guy couldn't tell you what else is different, right? Like there's a quad speaker array. Some of the biggest changes are the software things where they're like, oh, it works really well between your Samsung phone and your Samsung laptop. But like, yeah, sure, link to Windows or links to phone exists. And they've been, you know, companies have been trying to make that work forever. So it's, I, I found it very hard to get excited about the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra, is I guess what I'm saying, right? The, yeah. um, Sammy, Sammy has a has a good question, which they've been using all caps to 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 point at, <laughs> draw our attention to over a bit now. <laughs> the webcam, the webcam on the uh, Galaxy Book Three Ultra is 1080p, uh, and it's, it's 1080p got- across the whole family, actually. Exactly. Uh, they've also got a studio quality dual mic studio quality. I say in quotes because that's what Samsung says. I don't really want to tell you. Like, I I don't know if that word means what I, they think it means. You know what I mean? Like what studio quality you mean? There you go. Um, AXA says, I would pick Apple Silicon MacBook over this for development. That thing won't throttle even on battery. Um, which, yeah, we know that the MacBook is clear, clearly what Samsung is going for here. Um, specs wise, size wise, design wise, even. It's just hard for Samsung because they don't make their own silicon for laptops. So obviously Apple has that advantage when it comes to like a more integrated development production environment. I will say, I think Samsung has the edge on display. I think, I think the yeah, AMOLED, I- yeah. That's, that's a really good point that, that, you know, that AMOLED, they're calling it an AMOLED 2X display, which is, yeah. a, you know, 3K resolution, um, yeah. 16 by 10. And, yeah. you know, Samsung makes the best mobile displays in the industry. I'm expecting this, like this one to really wow me. What did you think when you saw it? I mean, they looked great uh, as per usual with Samsung devices. There's, uh, I didn't do a lot of scrolling to see if the 120 hertz refresh rate on that looked really great. I am concerned mm-hmm. about battery drain with a 120 hertz uh, display on a laptop yep. like this, especially one that's packed with the Core i7 and the 4050 and all of that good stuff. Uh, the battery size, I think, is something like 76 watt hours on the uh, Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. Uh, I mean, I don't really know how long that's going to last. That's something we'll need to test uh, to know for real, for sure. Yeah, and a, a couple of people were asking about the TDP of the Galaxy mm-hmm. Book Ultra. Samsung hasn't given us any specs on that. So hopefully we can follow up with that or, you know, when we get around to reviewing it, hopefully we have more information by then. And I will tell you that, like, I typed on that thing and I used the trackpad a little bit. And I mean, it's it's a thin notebook. So the 
keyboard travel is not going to be like as deep as I want. It, it is a big 5. trackpad, though. It's huge. I said it's positive, positively enormous, and that's in line with the Galaxy Book Series Two, right? Previous like 15 or 16 inch Galaxy Books have been uh, have had such big trackpads yep. as well. So um, we have the actual specs on the screen now. If you have any more questions about the Galaxy Book Three uh, specs, but I also want to make sure we save some time to talk about that surprise uh, announcement. Mm -hmm. uh, first off. Shout out to Hiroshi Lockheimer, our boy, our boy Hiroshi, who eats cucumber sushi like he's not half Japanese. But anyway, <laughs> Sherilyn's just hating on cucumbers for like the last three or four months. I don't know why. Cucumbers belong in my face and not on my tummy or not in my tummy. <laughs> I don't know. Someone's um, going to clip that one. I can't wait. Yes. Uh, Steven Salcedo in the chat. The last question I'll talk about for the uh, Galaxy Book 3. But by the way, Sammy, I already answered your question about the webcam. Okay. Uh, Steven Salcedo says, um, which 23 Ultra has the 12 MB RAM? I think 12 MB for RAM is very little. So I think you're referring to 12 gigs of RAM. Uh, there's a storage model that goes up to one terabyte. That's uh, storage, not RAM. Uh, I'm double checking the specs right now for yeah, it's, RAM info. It's eight gigs of RAM base uh, for mm. the S23, S23 Plus. Um, yes. And then it's eight gigs or 12 gigs of RAM for the S23 Ultra. That's um, right, that, yeah. That's it. Uh, really a good, good point. They didn't mention this or they maybe glossed over in the presentation. One nice thing is that they are doubling the amount of base uh, storage for a lot of the phones up to 256 yeah. gigs. Yeah. So, you know, last year, S22, it was 128 gigs of storage base. They're doubling yeah. that to 256 gigs for most of the models. Um, yeah. So that, that's really nice. Free upgrade. Um, and considering that the pricing is staying pretty much the same as last year, it's nice to get a little bit more storage for free, especially since, like, a lot of people were wondering, there's no micro SD card slot. Uh, yeah, that's a problem still to me. But, I mean, they've done away with micro SD card slots in a while, so I don't know. ZFG Mike hates cucumbers. Team hate cucumbers. Uh, Tech Talk Teardown asks if anything is new in director's view. We haven't gotten that detailed breakdown yet. I think that'll come when we pick up mm. our review units and get like a reviewer's guide. The Spirited Black Man says, cucumbers are amazing. Stop hating. There there are a few new uh, features in like the Expert Raw um, app. And yes. So there's like a, there's a astrophotography mode and um, a multi, multi frame processing mode. So there, you know, we'll have to test these out more because it's not something you can just like get a sense of in, you know, 30 seconds. Um, we but, have, yeah, go on. Know, it was, it really, you know, plays into that like big focus they had on the S23 Ultra's cameras. Absolutely. Uh, hi to Daniel Stakoff, who just said, hi, Adam Jakowenko says the trade-in values are rubbish this year compared to previous years. Agreed. We mentioned that slightly earlier in the stream. We have about just under 10 minutes left uh, for this Q&A session. So again, want to go back to that discussion about Hiroshi, Christian uh, Amon uh, from Google and Qualcomm, respectively, joining TMRO on stage to talk about their XR plans. Uh, our friend uh, Chris Velasco over at the Washington Post also wrote an article up about this where it seems like the three companies are teaming up on XR devices. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam, what did you make of all of this? So I thought it was very notable that they didn't mention a specific device or even a type of device. They said, hey, we're all working together to bring you some sort of XR gadget. Um, could be glasses, could be more something more substantial like a headset. Not really sure yeah. at this point. And I think this is actually like kind of like you know, adding to some of the momentum behind like, you know, Apple's glasses have been rumored forever. And now this seems like, oh, here's, you know, Google, uh, Qualcomm and Samsung working together to maybe do something as like a competitor. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they didn't talk much about specs or capabilities. So it's really hard to say at this point, you know, what this thing could look like or even function um, in yeah. terms of like the general headset landscape. We know Samsung is no stranger to headsets. I mean, the Gear VR headsets did pretty well. And that was also kind of a combination of Samsung and Google things, because wasn't it built on Daydream as well? Uh, not Daydream. Was that the protocol? Daydream? The, the Google's, it was Google's Daydream was their yes. AR platform. And it like right. worked together with some of the Samsung stuff, but like not yeah. completely. And it was really interesting because like, you know, those devices went away because I think everyone has kind of seen at this point that using your smartphone to power a headset doesn't really make a lot of sense. Your smartphone needs to be your phone. 
ideally you'd have a headset that can stand alone and doesn't need yeah. to be tethered to uh, either, either either wired or wirelessly to like a, either a PC or a smartphone. You just want it to do its own thing. And we've yeah. seen that with like, you know, the recently uh, like the HTC uh, Vive, their new headset and like the Quest uh, Meta Pro headset. Mm-hmm. Both, both of those are standalone headsets. And so now we're kind of seeing, I would imagine that this next thing will have to be a standalone thing, but you yeah. know, it's hard to say because they were just... They're kind of planting a flag saying, hey, we're working on this, but we are not telling you what uh, it is until some later time. It's such a Qualcomm move to do that. Like, oh, we're doing this. and then, right. But but I will say Qualcomm is probably one of the, the important components of this, <clears> right? <throat> Qualcomm will bring over its XR platform, XR chip uh, to power whatever device this is so that you don't need to have a phone on board. Uh, right. Samsung would bring most of that other like, you know, Gear VR established uh, experience over there. And then Google with its platform. I honestly don't know what Google's going to do there. Like, are we going to see another <laughs> VR platform from Google? Are we going to see an XR platform from Google? Yeah, or, you know or like, I mean? like, yeah, it's Google working on like a, a like an XR app store, like a like a branch for the Google Play Store. I don't know. Like, are we are we like like doing the the respirator thing and bringing back to life the Daydream VR platform? Like, I don't I don't know. So, uh, Michael M in the chat. Uh, I think mo- people seem to still be very hung up on the S twenty three phone. So let's answer more of your questions before we wrap in about five minutes. S twenty threes. Michael M says, is it worth going to from the flip for you're tired of your peeling screen and Samsung claimed that they would let you trade it in for the S twenty three and you would get the Ultra. I mean, they're very different phones. Yeah. Um, the Flip 4 is not as well spec as the S23 Ultra, I want to say, but it is novelty in that it flips, it becomes a smaller device. The S23 Ultra is a chunky boy. So you I mean, want to think about you, that. Yeah, and it kind of depends. Like, you know, if you've had the Flip 4 for a while and you like you realize like, oh hey, I want something with better cameras, a bigger screen, and I don't care necessarily about the style or the like the compactness of the phone, then yeah. I can see that as like a potential upgrade. Um, but it, you really got to think about like what you want from a phone yeah. um, and it, before you think about, like, oh, I'm just going to like, you know, dive into the upgrade. Right. And so I would say like, wait for us to be able to review it. I mean, this is not a phone that we're going to straight <clears> compare <throat> it to, but at least we'll know better th- about things like camera performance and like long uh, battery life and all of that other stuff, right. which brings me to John Peach's question. Uh, you're also asking if uh, there is a general improvement to the general bin 12 megapixel shots. No, we haven't done a side by side comparison. Obviously, we will in our review. But for now, I can't tell you if that is the case. Um, so this is something you have to wait for our review for. Oh, also, Sammy says, I look like Lisa from Blackpink. Hello, thank you. Oh my God, that's <laughs> high praise. That's a big, big compliment. Um, and, and actually, that's a good point because uh, all the all the new Galaxy phones and Galaxy books are available for pre-order today, but they don't officially go on sale until February 22nd. So Some of them are the 17th too, if I'm not wrong, right? Uh, possibly, but either either way, you have at least a good two weeks plus to like think about what you want to do in terms of like, you know, you can get those still, you can still get those pre-order bonuses if you don't order for, you know, until the 14th. Um, yeah. So maybe, you know, if, if you like know for sure, okay, that's fine. But if you're like on the fence, I would definitely say wait around to see how we're view testing um, and how, you know, we will have more camera samples and, you know, in-hand impressions. Uh, yeah. It's also like if you pre-order something, you get it like day one, the, the higher the chances are that you're going to get something that has, that ships with bugs. Uh, you have to wait for over-the-air updates. Very, very, very frequent occurrence uh, in phone buying land. Um, Studio B said the evil Google Kai showed up. Oh my gosh. Uh, cool. I didn't know that Hiro Shilok Kai was evil. I guess I have to ask. Um, but yeah, uh, if I know we're running out of time. We still can get a few more co- uh, final questions. I know a lot of people are asking for comparisons between like foldable phones, like the Fold and the Flip to the S23s, which again, like we said, not really uh, uh, apples to apples comparison. Uh, mm-hmm. We will get to that shortly. If you do have time tomorrow at about 10.30 a.m. Eastern, make sure to come back here to the Engadget YouTube channel because me and Sam will be uh, co-hosting the Engadget podcast live stream. We will be able to get to more of your questions and end we may have devices on hand to show you and answer your questions mm-hmm, with live mm-hmm. demos. So that'll be a more helpful situation. <clears throat> right. Uh, Elder Michael Sanders was asking about Z Fold 3 compared to the S23. So I think as a former Z Fold 3 owner, I think the main thing is like, do you really need a good good camera, especially a Zoom camera? Because if you're talking about the S23 Ultra, 
Because one thing that really annoyed me about the Z Fold 3 is that the cameras aren't as good as the Ultra's cameras, even the Ultra back, you know, in the, when the Z Fold 3 was current. And so that's kind of the big difference here. Uh, Aside from Cheryl obviously the screen. Right. Uh, P. Cheryl 15 says, S10 Plus user here, would you recommend the S23 Plus, S23 Ultra, or the latest Pixel? It's a tough question. I think you'll see a, a, a notable in improvement in performance across the board. Uh, all those three are going to be good for you. Mm -hmm. The S23 Plus and the S23 Ultra are still unreviewed and untested devices, so it's hard to say. Uh, and the latest Pixel, I love. I mean, I still have issues with Google software from time to time, but I love Pixel UI, um, and I love Pixel's cameras. So... That might be good if that's what you like. Um, Harvey Evans wants to know about the Galaxy Z because you're thinking of having one for your birthday from your mom and dad instead of your iPhone. I mean, Sam's a Galaxy Z Fold main user, so I'm sure, I mean, you seem to enjoy it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, for me, I love the foldable screen. I love being able to like, you know, check stuff quickly on the like small exterior cover screen. And then like, if I'm sitting down and playing a game, I can open it up and like, for me, that just makes me really happy. Um, I never get tired of like that transition. Um, but like I said, you know, especially for the Z Fold series, it's a big phone. It's a heavy phone, especially if you put a case on it. So there are some, you know, differences in terms of like how you use the thing and like, you know, do you have a purse to carry it in? I don't know. Maybe if you, you know, if you're going to put it in your pocket all the time, it's going to, you're, you're going to have a little that bulge going on, you know? Okay. <laughs> But, and obviously it's a much more expensive phone. If you're talking more about the flip, the flip is definitely a style play. You, you, you want to go out and show that phone off. It's really nice. It's compact. Um, oh, yeah. But, you know, once again, it's a hard switch to go from iOS to Android or back again. So you've got to be prepared yeah. for some, some growing pains. Yeah. Mecha Dragon 101 says, uh, I also own the S22 Ultra. Should I upgrade? I, I, I personally, at this point, without having tested the S23 Ultra, I don't think you need to upgrade. I think there's not enough changes. You don't need to jump from 108 megapixels to 200 megapixels. I That's agree. really the only difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, aside from if, if the curvature of the screen is of your S22 Ultra is super bothering you, maybe go into a store at some point and pick up the new one and see if it seems a little bit better. Because we don't, I haven't had them side by side yet. I can't tell you the difference if it's huge enough. But do that yourself, and then that should be the only decision, I think, maker here. Everything else says no. Um, now, we're about out of time. So uh, again, a reminder to come join us tomorrow, Thursday morning, 10.30 a.m. Eastern here on the Engadget YouTube channel for the Engadget podcast live stream. We will have probably a phone to show you and answer more of your questions. And thank you for joining us today. We're really, really glad you were here. I would do a shout out to all of your names, but there's a lot of you. I cannot say that many names in uh, 10 <laughs> seconds. Um, shout out to our video team, Luke Brooks and Julio Barrientos for putting this stream together. They are the magic miracle workers behind the scenes that yeah, are I wanna, making us throw, nice. throw, throw, throw some clapping hands up in chat. Yeah, throw some clap uh, emojis or heart emojis for our video team. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Thanks again for joining us. Bye.